Jerome, Arizona. I'll try not to get run over. This is a fascinating little town which has packed a hell of a lot of action into its short life. You can see it sits in a majestic spot, Cleopatra Hill rising out of the Verde Valley. And one of the reasons this small town, the reason this small town came into being was because it also sits atop an incredibly rich mineral geology. They reckon that by the time the mines closed here they pulled a billion dollars in copper, in gold, in silver out of the ground. And at once upon a time Jerome was regarded as the wickedest city in the United States of America. I'm sitting outside the Mile High Inn. It's in the Clink Scale building. This was constructed in 1899. And in 1899, this town had had three devastating fires between 1897 and 1899. Everything had burned down. They had to build again. There are walls in this building that are reinforced concrete 18 inches thick. And it worked. Many of the buildings in Jerome have been destroyed, have slid down the hill, disappeared into debris or been burnt. This building has survived as has Jerome against all of the odds because when the mine shut here in 1953 Jerome got down to a population of 50 people. So here I am at Husband's Alley which is a narrow little ginnel pointing down that way where the prostitutes working the town had little cribs with brick walls surrounding them. Because the mine worked 24 hours a day, everything else in the business district had to go for 24 hours a day, whether that was its bordellos, its bars, its hotels. The hotels would let out rooms at eight hours a time. People tend to romanticize the Wild West. There's a sort of idea of this freedom and this liberation which many of us are drawn to and I'm sure there's an element of truth in it but if you think about the lives of the women that worked in Husband's Alley getting paid a pittance to sleep with drunken miners yeah that doesn't sound like a fun gig to me in 1900 the population of this town was 78% male probably most of the women here were servicing that community one way or another and sometimes they lost their lives. There was a very beautiful girl who's commemorated here in the Ghost Walk who was found strangled. I don't know, it's not a thing that fills me with a sense of joy, that's for sure. It's got a really sad feeling and as I stand here and I kind of look over this bit of wood and I imagine what went on down Husband's Alley, that's a cruel, brutish world. I think the asylum is a name they've picked to convey the fact that this used to be a hospital, uh, a medical building. And it's one of the great things about Jerome for me is that its sheer ability to reinvent itself and to use its past to continue to survive into the present and the future. So this was an abandoned building for a long time. Now it's a successful hotel. Prior to that, it was a hospital largely for the miners that worked in the massive mining works that dominated this town. I'm sitting outside the famous Grand Hotel in Jerome, which is reputedly one of the most haunted buildings in Arizona. It was originally built as a hospital for the company mine. Um, it actually was only in operation for around 30 years, but in that time it saw an impressive amount of suffering and death and very famously uh, a gentleman was killed in the elevator here in 1936. There is a suspicion that it may have been murder and that elevator for the 40 years that this building was empty after the mines closed was meant to have the noise of it traveling up and down the shaft was, could be heard outside the building. I mean, the current staff of the building talk about lights going on and off, about maids being pestered while they're changing the rooms, about things flying off shelves. I mean, whatever you make of it, 
it's certainly a place that has quite a palpable and powerful atmosphere of its own. I have got some psychic abilities I, I don't want to tune in too deeply really but and it's a strange thing for me coming from a country Britain which has literally thousands of years of history layered one on the other I mean this building was in use for such a short space of time and yet that usage seems to have had such a vivid impact on the sense of causality here Yeah, maybe it was the sheer vividness of the suffering of those who died in this place.